The sinking of the RMS Titanic on the 15th of April 1912 has become one of the most profound moments in modern history. News of the tragedy shocked the world, signaling the end of an era where mankind had put its trust and belief in technology. It was not just the death toll of over 1,500 that added to the sorrow of the disaster. The sinking of the Titanic was a story of man challenging nature and losing. She boasted to be unsinkable, yet sank four days into her maiden voyage. Following the disaster, there was an attempt to shift the focus from tragedy to one of heroism. The name Titanic came to embody not just a cruel act of God, but the story of selfless bravery and duty to the last. As the tale of Titanic passed from generation to generation, the stories of her class structure and the inevitable loss of life on a ship with too few lifeboats were well told. What is not known is the story of the men below deck in her engine rooms, the men who worked to keep Titanic afloat and her systems running to the last minute, saving many lives. As she sank, this group of men tried to hold back the power of the sea and save the Titanic. Just a hell of a thing. Have you counted it? It's the same. We're all four days short. You're alive, aren't you? Listen, pal. I know a guy who'll part with $40 for anything you got. What do you say? Ah, and you must be leading fireman Frederick Barrett, am I right? No, oh, please. Would you care for tea or perhaps a glass of beer? I'm sure we can. No, thanks, sir. Very good. Straight to business, then. You have been singled out, Barrett, as a potential source of valuable testimony in this case. Now, do you know what that means? You will be subpoenaed to give evidence at the inquiry, and if you decide... Are you a lawyer, sir? <laughs> We're trying to piece together a picture of what happened. A picture we can all take pride in. You see, it's important that the public continue to feel secure traveling with White Star. Now, how do we help them to feel that? Hmm? By reassuring them that the crew, people like you, did their duty that night, stayed at their posts, followed orders. Yes, at times like these, grievous times, times of anxiety, people need... Well, what do they need? They need heroes, Barrett. We need to present the Board of Inquiry and the public with heroes. Chief Engineer Bell, did you see him at all that night? I did. Did you see him? Did you see any engineers on deck? I couldn't say. I couldn't say more than I've already said. 
Well, think about it. It's important. All hands to lifeboats! Yes, sir. All hands to the lifeboats! Very good, men. Stand down. Drill over. Get back to your posts and stand by. Get slow. Ahead. Get slow. Ease her up gently. When she's under full away, shut down the cylinder drain valves. Right? Let's have a poke about, shall we? So these are reciprocating four-cylinder triple expansion engines. Still maneuvering at slower head, so we're only using the outer screws. They have not yet engaged the low pressure turbine. Go on. Well, what do you want to know? I want to know what you know. It's a Parsons direct coupled low pressure reaction turbine. The Swiss loose valves are closed, sealing the turbine off while it's not needed. If you want to bring in the centre screw, you'll activate the changeover valves using a Brown's hydraulic engine. So they are teaching you something. Double-ended Scotch boilers. 24 of them with six furnaces each. Five single-ended boilers back there. Hey, you can take your coat off. What about you, Father? All this. You need to go over that fire tray. You're not getting the air through. Very good, sir. Coal fed every working part of Titanic. Her 29 boilers were the lungs of the ship, consuming over 800 tons of coal a day. They generated the vast amounts of steam needed to power the largest ship yet built. For every five crew members that worked aboard Titanic, almost four of them hailed from Southampton. With a national coal strike underway in Britain, there were up to 17,000 unemployed men in the town, eager to take up work. Nowhere would Titanic's loss be felt more than in Southampton's working class community. They're the pick of Southampton, sir. The very best. All right, men, come on through. Shepard, welcome to the Titanic, Shep. Well, what do you think of her? Can't tell yet, sir. She's not in the Olympic. 
Not what I'm used to, that's all. I feel unfaithful. Wife and mistress. I tell you, she's perfect. Yes, I can see that. Perfect. She's all your ship. Once you're signed in, lads, up to your quarters. D through G deck. Names and the doors. Titanic, gentlemen. Rubber bunkers, you can. First shift is in one hour. One hour till first shift. Titanic's layout between decks was emphatic in its class structure, and this was none more so evident than in the engineering quarters. Firemen, greasers, trimmers, known as the Black Gang, were given berths at the front of the ship, so as not to come into contact with Titanic's passengers. Thomas Dillon, but everybody calls me Paddy. Do they now? And you are? Bart! Bart! Hey. Look sharp. Bart! Over here. These quarters are for trimmers and stokers only. According to this, you're a leading fireman. I'll get you a better billet if you want. I'll be here. yourself. <laughs> you don't have to take your hat off in here, son. You're not in church, you know. park myself here. Who plays dominoes? I play dominoes. Kelly, William Kelly, Albert Irvine. Kelly, you say? Has anybody here seen Kelly? K E double L Y. Has anybody here seen Kelly? Find them if you can. From her birth in 1909, Titanic came to life in a country rife with political and religious tension. In her shipyard, Harlot and Wolf, there were running battles between Protestant and Catholic workers. Nationalists had found a voice in the Home Rule movement, in turn creating a fervent resistance from Unionists. The divisive nature of the conflict would continue on board Titanic. And three, on you go. That's it, keep that up. Here, you want to jump over those bars. Hey! Four inches over the grid, like this, right? Yeah? Good man. Even Titanic's boiler rooms had a class structure. At the bottom was the trimmer, bringing coal to and from the bunker to the furnaces and clearing out the ash. Above him, feeding the furnaces with coal was the fireman. And overseeing all this and controlling the pressure required from the boilers was the leading fireman. 
Need another pinch of coal down here. Come on, get a move on. That's it, lads. Keep her in the blood, yeah? Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts we are about to receive from thy bounty. Through the mercy of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. He's a grown lad, Perry. Make sure he gets double rations. So tell me, Frank, when did you start with Harland and Wolf? Last autumn, Mr. Harvey. You settling in? Mr. Andrews, we weren't expecting you. Yeah. Joseph, oh, please. Will you join us? Thank you, yes. Let me introduce my son, Mr. Andrews. This is Frank. How do you do, sir? Oh, I've heard all about young Frank Bell. <laughs> great things. Oh, we're expecting great things of Frank Bell. <laughs> you proud of the old man? Oh, very much, sir. And so you should be. He's the best engineer going, isn't that right, chaps? Oh, yes. Well, they have to say that, don't they? <laughs> ah, thank you, Perry. Hard tack and weevil as well. But I mean it, Frank. This is the best time to be starting in shop building. It's a golden age. <laughs> to the Titanic. All right. To the, the Titanic. Titanic. Mr. Andrews, could I ask something of you? Oh, by all means. Frank. No, oh, it's all right, Joseph. Carry on, Frank. Well, it's just, it says in here, it's impossible to conceive of any vital disaster happening to this ship, that she's practically unsinkable. Do you agree with that? What do you? Well, just say, for the sake of argument, that the hull were breached Where? and... I don't know. But that's important. Here, for example. Let Mr. Andrews... It's all right, Joseph. Uh, Andy. Very well. Now, even with both of these compartments completely flooded, the ship won't founder. Yeah, but what if... And any of these forward compartments. Well, I know that, but what I'm trying to say... But what? These bulkheads, extending from the bottom to the upper deck here and to the saloon deck here, are completely sealable. She's taking water in here, and here, and here. And what happens? Um, the captain releases the friction clutches on the waterside doors. You saw that in the drill. I say he doesn't have time, or forgets. What then? Well, the doors are fitted with floats beneath the floor plates. If the floats are lifted, the doors close automatically. And then what have we got? A lifeboat. The Titanic is its own lifeboat. The grandest and most luxurious lifeboat in the world. Titanic's iconic look was deceiving. Only three of her funnels actually worked. The fourth was a dummy added by White Star as the public associated four funnels with speed. Are you coming? What's the matter? Heights. Well, you stay here and keep watching. Are you sure, Freddy? George Bloody Barrett, come on. What do you say if we get caught? White's keeping watch. We're not doing anything wrong anyway. I suppose. Uh, this funnel's used for swank. Might as well put it to some use. Mm. 
What can you see? Oh, would you look at them all down there? Flags. <laughs> and a marching band. They're like ants. They're like an ant's nest all stirred up. Can you hear the band? Oh, come on up. Don't. They'll see you. That's so what if they do? I could be like John McCormick. This could be my chance. Imagine it. The world at my feet. When all the helpers fail and comforts flee, help all the helpers apart. You sing like Christmas, Freddie. Like Christmas. You really do. Captain's orders. We sail at noon. Let's get some steam up. Sir. Sir. Yes, my boy. Are all giraffe to be to work in a white star liner? Now, why would you be asking that, I wonder? Sixteen. But I don't want you getting any notions. I want you getting qualifications. Hey. Do you understand? Yes, Father. Would everyone not sailing on the Titanic oh, yeah. be yeah. this disembarkation yeah. on the starboard side? Father, would you have a word with Mr. Andrews for me? See about my joining the Titanic on the next crossing. Hey, you'll have enough on your plate at Highland and Wolf. I know, but I'm sure if you just ask. I'll give it some thought. Sorry to interrupt, sir. Hmm? Frank, there's something I need you to see. Right. Take care of your mother for me. I will. See you in a month. Could have been burning since Belfast, sir. Marsh, yes. With the coal strike, this is all we could get. We'll have to dig it out. It's too set in for smothering. Need a 12-man crew, strict rotation each watch. I'll draw up a list, sir. What's wrong with these chaps? Who? Start digging out that fire. Pass me your banjo. <laughs> Fires in coal bunkers were a common problem in the age of steam. With a major coal strike underway, Titanic had taken on board cheap coal that caused it to combust deep within boiler room number six. This fire within the bunker would play an important role in the coming disaster, weakening part of Titanic's hull. Keep your eyes peeled. 
Remember, if you want to know if a bearing's too hot, spit on it. Spits back, it's too hot. Did you ask him to do that? What's he playing at? Some of these carbon brushes are worn, and the commutator needs some attention. But we're not using the force set. Or oh, just in case. What's that sound? Main turbine, right underneath us. We're on their way, boys. Have you ever been to New York, Kelly? First time at sea. <laughs> it's your first time at sea? Oh. <laughs> has anybody here seen Kelly? K-E-L-L-Y. Has anybody here seen Kelly? We add a little piquancy to proceedings. What is it? The good stuff. Is it homemade? Is it homemade? He's asking. Homemade? Strain through the seat and my wife smalls. Now don't tell me you can get more homemade than that. <laughs> Fire in the hole, eh? <laughs> <coughs> Want to see the messes? There. It's in the all together. I did notice. Not bad, eh? <laughs> Got a picture of your old lady? Yeah. You a married man, Barrett? I was. I'm sorry. Pass away, did you? Thanks for the wet. Hey. Dear Frank, I hope that you got to Belfast all right. I got your wire from Liverpool. We've made a good run from Southampton, everything working A1. We nearly had a collision with the New York and Oceanic when leaving Southampton. The wash of our propellers made the two ships range about when we were passing them. This made the mooring ropes break and the New York set off across the river until the tugs got hold of her again. No damage was done, but it looked like trouble at the time. Keep well and be a good lad. Your loving father, J. Bell.
Dear Mother, we've had everything working nicely so far. I have four hours work and eight hours off. We had a full dress rehearsal of an emergency. The alarm bells rang for 10 seconds, then 50 doors, all steel, slid down into their places so the water couldn't escape from one section into the next. So you see, it is true. It would be impossible for the ship to be sunk. The next call is New York. Your loving son, Bertie. This is the leading finance table. Trimmers is over there. He's with me. Okay, who he's with? He's a trimmer. Trimmers is over there. Plenty of room. It's rules. It's a principle. Oh. It's a principle, is it? Move your papers, bastard. I asked a question. I will not tolerate fighting on this ship. Is that understood? Sorry, was this? Leave it, Paddy. If you've enough energy to fight, you've enough to work a double shift. Eight hours in the coal bunker. Why do you do that? What? That. All that altar boy stuff. Clothes. And... It's habit, I suppose. My father's a draper. It's just how it was at home. This is a Protestant ship built in a Protestant yard. I've just as much right to be here as you. Me, sir. All right. Still cold fire. Still burning, sir. I take a man as I find him, Barrett. I do my job, sir. I don't doubt it. Will that be all, sir? Aye. Work another double shift tomorrow. Bye. Uh -huh. 
Three days before the disaster, Titanic had received its first iceberg warnings from ships further into the Atlantic. The Titanic changed course, hoping to steer clear of trouble. It was magic. Just the two of us. Weren't married then. Hardly even knew each other. Knew we wanted to, if you get my meaning. <laughs> Here. It was spring. The ground by the river was all covered in wild garlic, bluebells, ragged robin in the lake. I was kissing and cuddling under the trees in the sunshine. Remember Sunshine Barrett? <laughs> she wouldn't let me get a hand to her. I mean, not properly. And still, it was like Adam and Eve. That's what I thought at the time. Adam and Eve, and this is the Garden of Bloody Eden. He didn't do anything. Listen, I've lived with them. I know what they're like. You don't think I put up with much worse than that? Every day, looking off my back. That's why I left Sligo. I mean, they'd kick us out if they had the chance. Home rule is Rome rule. Look, you're on the Titanic. And you're worried about working with a Catholic? He's nothing but a bloody papist. I fold.
22 and a half knots. I shiver. She's hungry tonight. Hey, she is that. All well, Barrett? Yes, sir. The problem with this ship is there are no problems. Could get a little boring, don't you think? Better to be busy than bored, my view, sir. Devil finds work for idle hands and all that. Something of the sort, sir. What is it? I'm not sure, sir. Shut the dampers! At 11.40 p.m., when watchouts first spotted the iceberg, orders were sent immediately to the engine room. Engine room, receiving. Understood. Stop all engines. Stop all engines! Stop all engines! Stop all engines! Stop all engines! Shut the doors! Come on, shut the doors! Shut the dampers! I said shut them down, lads! As the engines came to a stop, Titanic tried to steer clear of the approaching iceberg. Come on, shut the dampers! I said, lads, shut them down! Now drifting, it took 30 seconds until impact. dropped a propeller blade. I don't know, sir. We'll cut off the turbines and redirect steam to the main condensers. Hey, Shep, raise the bridge. What is it, old girl? What's the matter? One of Titanic's key safety features was now put into action. Her watertight doors were shut down, sealing off the ship's 16 compartments. Drop the dampers on those boilers! What in God's name has happened? I'm not sure, sir. Order came through for full stop, bring her up all standing, and that's it. I'm trying to raise the bridge, but I'm just getting stunned by it. Any news forward? Nothing, sir. Where's Harvey? Slow astern. Slow astern, 11.45. Activate the reversing engines. Slow ahead. What the hell are they playing at? He says he wants the dynamos running as if nothing's happened. And what has happened? What? You think they tell a bunch of greasers? Someone said we've run aground off Newfoundland banks. And what would you know about anything? I heard that too. Just get the power up on the sets, find out what's gone wrong with the phones, 
that's all he said. So that's all you need to know. Telephone and lighting circuit shorter than boiler six, five, four. That can't be right. That's what I'm looking at. Funny how you get used to the noise. Don't notice it till it's gone. Like she's in dry dog. Feel that? Huh. It's down a bit of the head, I'd say. When the iceberg hit Titanic's starboard side, it ripped along nearly 300 feet of her hull, allowing cold sea water to pour into her forward compartments. Firemen and engineers working in boiler room six were among the first to witness the flooding. Yet at this stage, they would not have known the true extent of the damage. Many of the men retreated backwards to boiler room five as Titanic's watertight doors came down, sealing off the ship's compartments one by one. Titanic's engineers now needed to clear the remaining boilers of their coal. Cold seawater hitting a fully pressurized boiler could cause a thermal explosion. Get those furnaces pulled! Put your bloody backs into it! Come on! Sir! What is it? You better see this. Shut down the cylinder drain valves when all the condensate is blown out. What's your name, son? Dylan, sir. But everybody calls me Paddy. I want you to open up this door for me, Dylan. Shit, we're not supposed to. You follow orders, don't you? Aye. I'll give him an handshake. With each of Titanic's compartments now sealed off by her watertight doors, the senior engineers needed to get forward to find out what had happened and assess any damage. Four separate boiler rooms now separated the engine room from the incoming water towards the bow of the ship. Feel that? Feel what, sir? It's like a Turkish bath down here. Taking water up ahead. Shut the door. What's happened, Barrett? We need to keep it shut. Close it. Barrett, what's up? I'll take you through the hatch, sir. Seemingly cut off from the flooding, the iceberg had in fact breached a fifth compartment. A tear of just two feet within a coal bunker located in boiler room five was slowly taking water. Ballast pumps, how many are there? Five, sir. Capacity? About 250 tons an hour, I'd say. That's an estimate. And they're reversible. I mean, we can use them to bail water rather than for trimming. Absolutely, sir. Through the ash ejectors. The bilge pumps? 
three of those. Slightly less capacity, I'd say. Uh, 150 tons an hour, something like that. Very good. Gauge the pumps, then. Yes, sir. How many? All of them. Need a team of carpenters down here right away to take soundings. And tell them to bring jarring equipment. I need someone to go into six and report back. Shep, you go with him. Sure. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Back up. My cabin would have been just down there on the left. This isn't the Olympics, sir. Yeah. Excuse me. Are we in New York yet? No, ma'am. Is anything the matter? I felt something. Nothing's the matter. It's just routine. Probably best to go back to your cabins. Andrews. Joseph. Check the return floor rate of the bear oil. What's the news? There's a hole in the hull and she's making water. Well, that's what they're saying anyway. She'd be limping into New York at this rate. That's if she doesn't turn back. It doesn't look good. Not for White Star anyway. Andrews has already been down for a bit, Joss. Who's Andrews? Does that mean we get overtime? You're joking. Look, you signed up for a single trip at an agreed rate of pay. Yeah, all right, Karl Marx. Don't change, however long it takes her to get to New York. How'd you like to sign a six bob for a month's work? A month? How much water? What? How much? How much water is she taking? Your alphabet, Joseph. Your A, B, C, do you know it, man? Your A, B, C, and D. I don't follow. From the bow, she can fill all of these compartments. That's A, B, C, and D. But E, compartment E, boiler room five, whatever you want to call it, that's her death sentence. But the soundings. I've carpenters in all forward compartments. I mean, she's hold. Surely. The amount of water she... The amount of water is immaterial. She can take on more water, just not in this way. Her neck is in the noose. This ship will sink. I give her an hour, an hour and a half at most. I won't let that happen. Let me show you something.
feel that. Water coming in below is forcing the air up. She's sighing. sections of Titanic were filling uncontrollably. As each bulkhead was breached, the weight created by the water forced Titanic's bow further into the ocean. You, Barrett. You stay down here with Shepard and Harvey and help man the pumps. Sir. Have you transferred steam pressure to the ash ejectors? I believe Mr. Harvey has, sir. Keep those fires drawn. We don't want the pressure building up and blowing the joints. Can you keep them pulled? I did my job, sir. As Titanic slowly listed forward, the firemen's bunk rooms towards the front of the ship were among the first areas to start flooding. It was now clear that water was pouring over Titanic's bulkheads. What's the matter, boys? Didn't bargain on an early bath? Nice and clean for those burly hairs, eh? I need you to fetch me some lamps from the portside storeroom. What? It's on G-Deck, four of the workshops. And I thought we were pals. As Titanic's first distress call was sent, for the small group of electricians on board, their role became vital. They were now in charge of diverting power through miles of circuits that ran throughout the ship, keeping essential systems working. All right, comrades. Looks like we're going to have to put in a little extra on this one. No, we're busy. <laughs> you just got busier. Bell, you want the auxiliary sets working? Turn on the lifeboat when she's... Lifeboats? Well, I'm just the messenger. The emergency steam supply pipe runs above the watertight bulkheads through to the auxiliary dynamos on D-deck. They're on the aft side of the turbine engine room casing. Now, how much power will they give us? 30 kilowatts each at 100 volts. There's a cross connection here. We need to take steam from boiler rooms two, three, four, and pass it up to the emergency dynamo. There's a valve here, here, and another one. It's just going to leave us the lights. Can you isolate these circuits? Oh, 
Fires are being pulled in five. The water hits the boilers that blow. Every remaining ounce of pressure I need to power the ballast and bilge pumps. So what are we supposed to use for the emergency circuit? The lifeboat wants us and the light's down here. Divert the port side boiler from two. What's your name, son? Irvine. Sir. How old are you, Irvine? Eighteen, sir. From two, then. Aye. Good lad. Switches. Who's that? Who the hell do you think it is? Ah, oh, would you bloody believe it? As the first lifeboat was lowered, it had a capacity for 65. There were 28 people on board. Right, gentlemen. We're going to make our way up top. Orderly fashion now. Henry Allen. Walter Binston. Edward McGarvey. I need some men below to help me pull the fires in five. But Bell said... I need some men. What's the matter with you? Right, lads! Time to work! Come on! Somebody on starboard! You lot, take them! Feel it all pressing in on me. And I think about the ocean and how deep it is underneath us. Miles of it. Do you think we'll ever get off? person I saw leave this ship I was a kid about my age he looked at me and I knew what he was thinking he was thinking I wish I was in that uniform I wish that was me you're bloody good at your job Kelly I've seen you Bloody good. What difference will that make? I don't know. None, probably. But you're wearing the uniform, aren't you? The 
battle to save Titanic was now taking place in boiler room number five. Titanic's pumps became a lifeline for survival. Normally used to keep the ship on an even keel, they were now given a new role, stopping the incoming water from overwhelming the ship. I need you to start the fourth generator, now. There's not enough pressure in the system, sir. People are trying to get off this ship. We will give them the best chance we can. We have the auxiliaries running off the boilers in three. We have the port side boilers in two, it's... But there's the starboard side in four. Aye. If we keep her in steam, we can cross-connect from the supply lines to the reciprocating engines. Do it. A series of events had by now brought Titanic towards her end. Oblivious to what had taken place above decks, the engineering crew were now battling against rising seawater, slowly taking over the ship. By now, the senior engineers would have realized the fate of the ship. The situation turned from saving Titanic to one of delaying her sinking. I need steam for the pumps, for the generator, for this ship. But I'm offering you a choice. You can take your chances up top with everybody else. Stay down here with me. We'll try and keep her afloat as long as we bloody can. That's not my order. It's your decision.
And I thought we were pals. So long, Paddy. Right, lads! Need to keep boilers two, three, and four in steam. No stoke and regulators, you'll have to judge it yourself, all right? Let's go. Bloody King Canute lying here. Another thing that always struck me about that story. What, sir? People think it's about how arrogant and foolish he was, trying to hold back the tide. I don't see it that way. I think old Canute was trying to say, a king compared to the sea. Nothing. I mean, this ship has a gymnasium, a library, a swimming pool, for God's sake. What is she compared to the sea? Thing. The remaining boiler rooms not yet taking water were now used to create steam. Through firing the furnaces, the dynamos could provide essential power so that people and crew could make their way towards the upper decks. Good thing you cleaned those brushes. Where's Middleton? Does he know how to work it? White! You see that lever? Push it round clockwise. Slowly. Working, Bart. It's only bloody working. The stress upon Titanic's hull as she was being pulled further into the water was immense. The weight of the sea pouring into her forward compartments had finally brought her to breaking point. Move it! Move it! Boiler room six had by now completely filled with water and its bulkhead collapsed.
Kelly? It's hopeless. Kelly! Kelly! Good evening. I am. Top of the brush, old man. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Cheers, boys. Barrett, go up top with the others. I'm gonna pump out boiler room number four. Barrett. When I opened the door, I thought she'd be alone, but she wasn't. He didn't see me at first. But she did. And he sees her looking at me. And he knows I'm there behind him. And I cut it down. She's hiding under the sheet. And he's up against the wall. And I'm thinking I could drive me fist into his throat. I could yell him. He knows it. Oh, he's expecting it. And he closes his eyes. It's all right, lad. I loved her. I mean, I worship that woman. So I left them there. And that's when I signed up for this. So they're safe. Because I can't get at them. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna pump out boiler in number four. I need you to do something for me. To go up top and report back what's happening. I want to know what you see, what you hear, everything. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Why? Everything.
Chief Engineer Bell, are you receiving me? This is Bell in the engine room. I repeat, are you receiving me? Bell to breach! Witnesses all testified to seeing Titanic's lights still burning just minutes before she disappeared into the ocean. Heroes, Mr. Baron. Men who died fighting to the last so that others might have a chance of life. Now, can you give us the heroes we need? I can't tell if this is false modesty or pig-headedness. You're a hero, aren't you, Baron? Why? For standing by your post and following orders. That makes me a hero? Doesn't it? You're a hero in my book, Barrett. Because it suits you. Because it suits White Star. You're a hero for what you did, Mr. Baron. What did I do? I survived. And then you cut my pay the moment she goes down. Your dead heroes come cheap. I'm alive. I'm a Stalin, sir, but everybody calls me Paddy. It will never be clear if engineers managed to make it above decks as Titanic sank. For many, it would have been impossible as they were isolated deep in the hull of a dying ship. Without doubt, the men of the engineering section had worked to keep Titanic from sinking for up to an hour and a half longer than was expected, saving hundreds of lives. Frank Bell? Yes, I'm Bell. I made a promise to your father. He wanted you to have this. My dear Frank, I feel sure by the time you read this, they'll be saying all sorts of things about what has happened here. They'll find their villains and their heroes, tell their stories to make sense of the senseless. They'll tell you, I hope, that you can be proud of your father. But all I can think of now is how proud I am of you, remembering you, knowing you, knowing for certain what you will become. I have the strength to do what I have to do. Look after your mother for me. Keep well and be a good lad. Your loving father, J. Bell. <laughs>